Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking about tips for things that I wish that I knew before planning my wedding. If y'all watched my previous video, I gave y'all 10 tips that I wish that I knew before planning my wedding, and I decided to make another one because there's just so many, and in this video I actually have 12 for you guys, so let's get started. So the first tip that I have for you guys, it has to do with your tanning and your hair and makeup. Whatever you decide to do on your day, um, that's totally up to you, but personally, I did my own tanning and I use this product right here. It's called, let's see if it focuses, Pure by Bondi Sands. Um, I use this for my body and it works really well. It goes on like just a really clear, kind of looks like soapy water. Um, you just applicate it with, I use a latex glove. You can use the mitt that they give you, um, but personally, I think that the latex glove works better, it's easier for me. So I use that on my body, and then this is also by them. It's Pure Bondi Sands, you can get this at Walgreens. You can get this off Amazon as well, that's what I do. Um, you get it for a little better price, and I just get everything off Amazon. If you decide to get your tan professionally done, make sure that you read so many reviews and really do your research on that person because you only get one shot at it and <laughs> you don't want it to be a disaster. So personally, I had a destination wedding and I didn't feel comfortable getting my tan there because I didn't know anybody there and I was just wasn't comfortable with it and I do my tan all the time so I knew for sure that I wanted to do my own and it turned out great. If you use this product, it's amazing. You won't regret it. Just make sure you get every nook and cranny on your body, have somebody help you um, because you don't want to mess that up. For hair and makeup, it was kind of a different story because I had no other choice but to go with somebody in that area um, and I am not good at hair and makeup. Like, I am so bad at it. So I decided to hire somebody. I looked at so many reviews and pictures and that really helped me. I wasn't able to do a practice run with her either so I ended up just winging it the day of my wedding. I wouldn't recommend doing that, <laughs> but um, yeah, if you can, get your trial done with that person. Make sure it's what you want and maybe do a couple different hairstyles or different makeup looks to decide which one is for you. Tip number two is make sure with every single vendor that you're hiring that you get their contracts in your hand before you pay in full. So I know with a lot of brides, they pay totally up front and they don't read the contract thoroughly, and at the end of the day, they don't get what they thought they were getting, that what they paid for, and it's because they didn't um, make sure that they contacted their vendor and said, I want the contract in full. Usually they send you a proposal beforehand and then they send you some sort of contract letting you know their guidelines and regulations and what you are paying for exactly so that you can use that in the long run. You don't wanna pay in full and then end up empty handed at the end of the day. That would be a disaster. Tip number three is gonna be, tell your photographers what shots you want for the day of. Make sure that you give your photographer a list of names because it's gonna be a big mess on the day of your wedding and the photographers don't know the names, they can't read their list and call out people's names of the groups and people that you want. Also, along with that, make sure that if you're visiting your venue beforehand that you scout out the area and write down those spots. That way, whenever the wedding day comes, you can already know where those areas are and take your photographer straight there. Maybe they give them a tour beforehand or have your coordinator give them a tour beforehand so that um, your photos can just go much quicker. That way you don't have to make your guests wait um, after the ceremony. Okay guys, tip number four is gonna be it is not tacky to have your guests pay for their alcohol. In my case, our venue had us pay for each person individually, and when the alcohol ran out, it ran out and that's all they had. So we automatically thought that we had to overpay for the alcohol, pay for a couple more guests, and just to be safe. But what actually ended up happening was people didn't drink enough alcohol, and we had so much alcohol left over, um, even I, 
we paid for my alcohol and I really only had about one drink the whole night and I just feel like we could have saved a lot of money because that can get really expensive. So if your venue offers an option of maybe paying for like the first two drinks and the rest is on them, I feel like that would be a great option. I wish I would have known that when planning my wedding. <laughs> but yeah, it is not tacky to have your guests pay for their drinks in general or maybe have the first two paid for and the rest is on them. Also, I would recommend having a tip jar out next to your bartender. Um, I think it's just polite to have your guests tip them if it's not already included in your liquor package with the venue. All right, y'all, tip number five is make a packing list, especially if you have a destination wedding. I'm actually living in Florida right now, but I'm from Kansas City, Missouri, and that's where we had our wedding. So I had to pack everything up at my house here in Florida and take it to Missouri. And without that packing list, I know I would have forgotten something. Packing lists are always a good idea. Along with making a packing list, I wanted to add, if you are traveling with a wedding dress, then your airline sometimes will have a closet in first class. And all you have to do is go up there and say, hey, I'm getting married. And I would love if you guys could put my wedding dress in your closet. And nine times out of 10, they're gonna let you because you kind of get special treatment that way. Um, but sometimes they just don't have a closet and that's okay. If you have a bag for your dress, just fold it up and put it in the overhead bin. And it was super easy to travel that way. And whenever I got to Kansas City, I just steamed it really well and it was fine, it worked perfect. Okay, tip number six, do a first look. Obviously, this is totally up to you as a bride and this is your wedding, but I would highly recommend it just because it was so convenient. It was also so fun and it didn't ruin the wedding at all or the special moment where my groom saw me walking down the aisle. It didn't ruin it at all. It was actually the best decision I could have made whenever we did our first look. Right afterwards, we did all of bride and groom photos we also did all of our bridal party photos, so the ring bears, the flower girls, bridesmaids, groomsmen, everything we did before the ceremony directly after the first look and it saved us so much time in the long run because otherwise we would have had to do that after the ceremony and that would have caused us to have made our guests wait even longer and nobody likes to wait, especially whenever they're waiting to eat. So I would highly recommend if you're not doing a first look, then do all of your bridal photos before the ceremony because it'll save you a lot of time. Along with that, I want to add if you are getting your makeup done by an artist or they're traveling to you, whatever it is, ask for a makeup touch-up kit because it's going to help you out a lot. Personally, my makeup stayed on pretty well all night long, but my lipstick was constantly rubbing off with all the kissing and just the heat of the day and licking my lips or whatever, drinking. So I would highly recommend at least getting a lip kit just to touch up your lips. If you have a minute to go to the restroom and just kind of do a little touch up, it's a lifesaver. Tip number seven is invite everyone. And obviously that's optional because I know not everybody wants a big wedding, but if that's something that you're going for, then I would recommend inviting more people than you think are gonna show up because a lot of people won't be able to make it or they'll just do last minute cancellations and there's nothing you can do about that. So if you're going for more of like a bigger wedding, I would say invite more people than you originally thought you would. But if you're going for a smaller ceremony, that's awesome. I totally rec recommend that too. Personally, I had a smaller wedding and I loved it. Okay, tip number eight is bake your own desserts. We did this at my wedding and it was so fun. It was just something fun that we did as a family but the night before the wedding. My sisters and my mom um, and my sister-in-law all helped out. It was amazing, it was so much fun. You don't have to bake all of your desserts, but I would highly recommend just doing a few if that's something that you enjoy doing. Guests love it and they taste amazing and you know what's in them. So you can, if you wanna do gluten-free, dairy-free, if you have allergies and stuff like that. With that, you also save money. We went to Walmart to get everything, all of our ingredients, and we just made cake pops, cookies. We made little wedding cookies. They were really good. Um, we did have donuts that we just bought at Krispy Kreme the day of because they would stay fresher that way. So stuff like that that needs to stay fresh that um, you really don't want to refrigerate, I would recommend buying. But if you just bake a few things here and there, I think that's a great idea. Tip number nine is take a bustle video for your bridesmaids. 
I didn't do this, but I wish that I would have because my bridesmaids weren't even there to kind of help me bustle my dress at first. And it was just me and my photographer trying to figure it out and she didn't know how to do it. Um, I would recommend that you also get your buttons on your bustle color coded. Ask your seamstress if she's able to do that. That's super helpful. But also ask her to take a little video of her bustling your dress whenever you're getting it altered. It's super helpful. It'll help you out a lot in the long run. Tip number 10 is don't forget to tell people about your guest book. With my wedding, I wasn't the person who put my guest book out for everyone to sign. It was um, my coordinator, I think, but it was in an area where a lot of people couldn't see it. I didn't know where it was all night long, so I wasn't able to tell people where to go to sign it. Um, I wish I would have told my DJ or someone to announce it at some point, be like, hey, don't forget to sign our guest book, um, because my guest book now actually doesn't have a lot of signatures in it, which is kind of sad. I wish that there was more, but that's all right. So I thought I would show you my guest book. I got this off Etsy. Um, if you watch my last video, you'll know that you can get everything off Etsy. And I'll just show you. These are some photos that people took. We did a little Polaroid guest book situation. And mine, my guest book was huge. I accidentally bought like a huge guest book. So um, I actually have all these pages that nobody signed. So just. I would recommend telling your DJ or whoever on the microphone, hey everybody, go sign our guest book please, it would really mean a lot. Tip number 11 is get gifts for people who have helped out for your big day and planning or whatever it is. I would highly recommend getting gifts for your mom, mother-in-law, father-in-law, dad, bridesmaids, groomsmen, you name it. People who were there for you, supporting you and have helped any way and planning your wedding i think it's just polite and also a fun thing to do personally i like watching people um open gifts that i've made like handmade or just cards and stuff like that um that's my love language so i would highly recommend doing that for example i got my bridesmaids all earrings and robes to get ready in the day of and i just wrote them all a little sweet card and it was just to show them how much i appreciated them and all their help and being there for me on my big day. All right, y'all, tip number 12 kind of has to do with tip number 11, and it doesn't necessarily have to be something you need to know before you plan your wedding, but I just wanted to throw this in here. Write thank you cards to all of your guests or anybody who has sent you a gift. I think that a lot of people sometimes forget to do this and or they feel like they don't need to do it, and personally, I just think it's really polite to do um, to show them how much you appreciate them thinking of you, even if they couldn't be there. So something cool you could do is after your wedding, take some photos that you took on your wedding day and get them printed into like a card form. You can do that at Walgreens or something and send that to your guests or whoever, especially if they weren't able to be there on your big day, but they sent you a gift, send them that little picture of your wedding day um, with a little sweet note inside, just thanking them, just letting them know that you're grateful um, for them thinking of you and showing their support. Okay, y'all, that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below if you learned something or if you wanna see more videos like this. Um, I would really appreciate if y'all would like and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.